Mick Whelan is the General Secretary of the ASLEF Union. He joins me now. Uh, morning to you, Mick Whelan. Thanks for talking to us. Um, first of all, tell us about the timing of this strike today. You've got another one planned on Wednesday. Uh, I spoke to the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper, in the last half an hour or so, and he suggested, he thought, that your timing was politically motivated, designed to hamper the Tory party conference. Oh, no, we are targeting the Tory party conference, but it's not politically motivated. It's, we're running a Where's Mark theme along the lines of Where's Wally because we haven't seen him since uh, December of last year. Nobody's come and talked to us from um, the government. We haven't seen the Rail Minister since January. Nobody's spoken to us since we rejected the deal in April. That wasn't a deal contained all our red lines. And we're trying to encourage people. We've been falsely accused in the last 14 months of targeting events. This is the first one we have targeted. Well, yeah, and I, when I spoke to Mark Harper, I put this to him. I asked him why he hadn't met you for talks. And he said, we've given you a fair and reasonable offer. Those were his words. And he said that he thinks that you should be putting that offer to your members uh, and seeing what they think before they continue discussions. Well, do they? Really? Well, I'm slightly stunned because all I've seen from the government, the DFT, the Treasury and the employers is lies and deceit. So if you substitute reasonable and fair for lies and deceit, I think we're in the right place. Let's not forget, when Mr Harper took over in January of last year, it was a meet and greet, and he could put Mr Merriman in to facilitate the talks. Before we had any talks or any facilitation, they put a deal out that hadn't been negotiated, we'd never seen, to rip up every condition that we have, national and local, uh, and that not quite actually got rejected. And then after that, they begged us to come back to the table. We set up a framework agreement about what we'd do. And we also had five meetings taking all the red lines out of everything that happened to try and find a way forward. And then they produced a deal with all the red lines in that was naturally going to be rejected because they set up to fail. I find the dissembling from the uh, transport department and the ministers quite frightening. Uh, as, as far as the, the, the pay aspect of it is concerned, um, the rail delivery group, which represents the train operators, when, when talking about that, they say that the offer would bring the average driver's salaries at, from £60,000 to £65,000. They say that's more than double the average UK salary. What do you think the public will, will make of that? Well, they've been trying the politics of our MV uh, line for... A, a long time now. They haven't mentioned that we haven't had a pay rise for five years. They haven't mentioned that they're making hundreds of millions of pounds in profits and paying dividends to their shareholders, yet they're not paying the workers who work for them. I think it's quite deceitful and dishonourable the way in which they operate. And they also say they're ready and willing to talk to you, but that any talks about pay also need to include talks about modernisation as well and, and, and addressing working practices that, that go back decades. That's not true. There is no modernisation on the table. What they want is hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds of productivity for nothing. We have modernised. And bear in mind, I've done 14 pay deals in the last 12 months. Yet we don't have a problem in Scotland, we don't have a problem in Wales, we don't have a problem in freight, we don't have a problem in open access, we don't have a problem in Merseyrail, we don't have a problem in Eurostar, we don't have a problem in the Elizabeth Line. This is a political dispute generated by the Westminster government at their behest. These people signed contracts with the government to limit our pay. It's nothing to do with modernisation at all. OK, well, Mick Whelan, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks very much indeed for joining us.